but have taken to stress that the budget won't affect the main taxes that working people pay. Well, people are divided on whether or not they think the budget was fair. 34% say it was, 34% say it wasn't, and 32% are unsure, so a fairly equal mix there. Well, Max Shepard is the chief economist at the Yorkshire Building Society, and I spoke to him before we came on air, and asked him what his takeaways have been from the budget. Yeah, so it's been a really interesting budget, really, and quite unusual in many respects. So there's there's three key points, really, that she was trying to get across. So the first one being um, increasing spending on public services, so in particular on, on the NHS. To do that, which leads on to the sort of second, the second point is she's done that by raising taxes quite significantly. So 40 billion of tax hikes, um, which is the most we've seen in a budget since 1993. So quite significant. And then lastly, um, she's tweaked the fiscal rules, which will allow um, quite significant capital investment um, over the next five years. So £100 billion worth of extra capital investment over five years, um, which you'll be able to build roads, schools, um, look at railways, hospitals. Um, so all that long term investment that the government wants to do, um, she's now allowing herself and planning to do so over the next five year period. Prior to the budget, Max, I know you made a submission to the government asking for things like the help to buy scheme and a review of, of regulation and taxation in the private rental sector. Are you happy with what the Chancellor said regarding that? I think there's, there's, a, there's a couple of key things really that we'd like to have seen which perhaps weren't in there. So the first one really is on stamp duty. The, uh, in 2022, the uh, stamp duty thresholds were increased so in other words you didn't pay stamp duty on your property um, until the property was over two hundred and fifty thousand pounds in value now from april 2025 that will now return back to the old stamp duty threshold so now anyone buying a property over 125,000 pounds will be taxed um, so that means on the average house price say 280,000 according to the ons you'll now pay four thousand pounds in stamp duty versus one and a half thousand pounds you would have paid um uh, back last year or, or this year at the moment. So that's one of the problems that that's one of the things we would have liked to have seen in the budget, um, which we didn't see. So that's really on the mortgage side. And then on the savings side, there was another there was another key element that we'd have liked to have seen. So the personal savings allowance um, at the moment allows a basic rate taxpayer to earn a thousand pounds in interest, and a higher rate taxpayer taxpayer can earn five hundred pounds in interest tax free before you start being taxed. And obviously that's quite that's fine when interest rates are really low. So when savings rates are at 0.5%, a basic rate taxpayer could um, have £200,000 in savings before being subject to this tax. If you're a high rate taxpayer, £100,000. Now we're seeing savings rates higher. So now we're seeing savings rates at around 4.5%. You're getting dragged into this, um, this, this tax, so tax on your interest income. So now a basic rate taxpayer maybe needs around twenty, twenty-two thousand pounds before they pay tax, and a higher rate taxpayer can really do it by, you know, having ten thousand pounds in a savings account. Yeah. So the challenge with this is, a, it's increasing your tax liability for someone with ten thousand pounds in savings, and obviously you want to encourage people to have that buffer. And also, it's onerous. You know, you have to do yourself self, self tax assessment um, with this. So we would have liked to have seen an increase in that as well. So maybe from a thousand pounds for a basic rate taxpayer to something like five thousand pounds. So that's another area that we'd really like to have seen something on. And Rachel uh, Reeves didn't really do that or address that in this budget. Yeah. Um, do you think that that's going to put people off saving then? I mean, obviously, you know, we, we talk frequently about the cost of living crisis that we're in and, and people just aren't as able to put away money in savings, do they? Um, so do you think that is going to put people off? It's interesting. So you can still obviously use ICES. So ICES are a, a tax free way of, of saving. And, and she didn't do anything in terms of reducing the amount you can put into ICES, which is which is a positive. That was something that was speculated prior to the budget. So people still can. And save obviously, but you've got you've got people who perhaps um, aren't looking at ISAs and have just got money in in savings accounts, and now all of a sudden they've got this tax burden, um, which which is a challenge. The officer budget responsibility has said that the cost of mortgages would rise faster under Labour's plans than with the last Conservative government. Do you agree with that analysis? The initial market reaction, so just after the budget, so about half two, um, we saw the expectations of the Bank of England base rate, which is the foundations of mortgage pricing, uh, increased 0.2% on average. So that does impact mortgage pricing. So if, if you look at it immediately afterwards for a £200,000 loan, you're looking at an extra £400 a year in terms of cost on your mortgage. But the thing with this is that's looking at the budget in isolation because there's so many economic data points coming out all the time. You've got the US election coming over uh, next week. 
these interest rate expectations are changing all the time. So it's very difficult to say in isolation what this budget will do. And to be honest, there's, there's so many factors out there that you can't really just look at the budget in isolation. So yes, the initial reaction was a slight increase in interest rate expectations. But on the other hand, these things move all the time. Yeah. Was bringing pension death benefits under the inheritance tax umbrella a predictable decision, do you think, for the government trying to raise income? Rachel Reeves was really trying to, to raise taxes, as I said as, as I said at the beginning, to try and to try and make public services better by increasing spending on public services. She has to balance the books, so uh, one of her fiscal rules is to ensure day-to-day -day spending matches with, with government revenue, and she, in, according to the OBR, she'll be able to do that in two or three years' time. So this is one of the ways she's, she's chosen to do, which is a political choice, isn't it? But it's, it's a way for her to raise, to raise some income in order to spend on the NHS. So I guess it's a political choice what she's, what she's chosen to do, and that's fine. And if she can then go and spend that on public services then and, you know, increase the efficiency or, or the value that we're getting out of our public services, then I suppose that can't be a bad thing. Yeah. Um, there's been plenty said about this budget, Max, you know, plenty of criticism around some of the decisions that the Chancellor has made. Was there anything that stood out for you that, that actually is a really helpful move in this budget? Yeah, definitely. So, so one of the obvious ones is fuel duty, which was expected to, to increase, maybe 7p a litre. She left that frozen for another year, just being cognizant of the fact that the cost of living crisis is still there. Um, so freezing fuel duty is obviously is a great thing for, for a lot of people. Another one is the national living wage increase as well. So that's increased by 6.7%, um, which is considerably above inflation. So hopefully those three million people on the national living wage um, can start feeling slightly better off and having more money um, in their pockets in the future. Is there a danger, though, that's going to hamper employment prospects? So, you know, many small businesses are a bit concerned about with that and the, the rise in uh, national insurance contributions that maybe they'll struggle to afford it. No, that's definitely true. And I think if you look at those policies in isolation, obviously, you know, one would assume that it's going to be a challenge for these businesses to go and employ people. But if you look at the whole suite of packages that she that she announced, if you look at the capital spending she's intending to do over the five year period, that is really good for jobs and that's really good for employment and it's good for growth as well. So if the economy is growing, there's more money in people's pockets generally, then they'll be spending more money um, for these for these small businesses. So hopefully that can absorb some of that cost. Uh, just finally, Max, um, I appreciate your expertise in this. What, does it feel like a growth budget to you? I think it, it definitely is a growth budget. Rachel Rees's intention is for this to be a growth budget. Obviously, it's too early to tell. We'd all love a crystal ball and say, you know, in five years' time, this has worked. All chancellors aim to grow the economy. This is the way Rachel Rees is trying to do it. I do think the increase in capital investment does spur growth. I do think that is, um, that is positive from a growth point of view. So let's just, you know, we're all hopeful that it works. That's Max Shepard there, who's the chief economist at the Yorkshire Building Society. 25 minutes past three. We've been talking about hedgehogs on the programme this morning. Uh, you, might worry, you might wonder why, but let me, let me tell you. The decline in the population of European hedgehogs means that the gardener's friend, it, as it's known, has shifted from least concern to near threatened. Now, monitoring efforts indicate that the decline might exceed 30% over the past decade, and that's really putting the species at serious 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 species at